Hi, we're here at Town Meeting TV, and I am very happy to be joined by Andrew and Hannah. Hannah. Hannah Christensen. Thanks for uh, coming in. We met you originally because you came in to borrow a piece of equipment. Tell us a little bit. What were you doing? What? Yes, yes. So uh, we came by, I came by, to, to borrow the owl that delightful little piece of, of technology because we needed it for um, our financial literacy series, which we recently undertook with both Opportunities Credit Union and the city's TCV program, which are basically liaisons between city government and seven distinct new American communities in the greater Chittenden County area. So essentially we were doing a kind of a dry run of this financial literacy series on what it would look like um, to actually do this financial yeah. workshop in the laundromat, and we needed to borrow it, so you laundromat. were gracious. Yeah, this you is were gracious we, enough to let us have it. Thank that's you. That's why we do. That's what we do. We we lend equipment for folks to be uh, making um, community events happen. And um, but it made me curious. Queen Street Laundry. So tell us a little bit. Who are you? Introduce yourselves. And yeah. Yeah. So I'm Hannah Christensen, and this is Andrew, and um, we. Um, kind of came into the laundry business, uh, sort of wanting to, we wanted, we needed a machine to use for an apartment that we have. And so we decided, let's um, try to get one. And King Street Laundry had recently closed down. And so we decided um, to reach out. Andrew reached out and the previous owner said, no, but do you want a laundromat? And Andrew's like, hmm, that sounds interesting. Uh, let me talk to my wife and I'll get back to you. So I said, well, I've, it's interesting, but I, I don't want to open it in the same way or reopen a laundromat that already was having some challenges and why it closed down during COVID was people just weren't using the space respectfully. Um, so I said, if we can do it differently, then let's give it a go. And so that's sort of what brought us into the laundry world. Um, and so, what are we doing? We're bringing it more as a community space, more as a place where people can um, get clean clothes, which everyone deserves to have access to clean clothes, but also come and paint a ceiling tile or get some financial literacy information, um, pick up a book at our little King Street Community Library. Amazing. And what brings you, like, what is your background? What did you, what were you doing before King Street Laundry came along that yeah, and so inspired I, this? I, I actually continue to have another world. Uh, I do have my professional world. I work for a large biotech company, uh, work remotely. So I'm able to kind of balance the demands of the, of the laundromat space with also my, my normal nine to five job. Yeah although nine to five is slightly flexible. You know, there's a lot of work from home. In fact, oftentimes I'll be in the office of the laundromat doing my normal corporate job as well. Yep. Neat. And so. I'm um, a childbirth educator and a labor doula. Cool, so you have um, an interest in, well, you have some experience in working in this, this Come this in this business world. Yeah, mm -hmm. certainly. And then, you, but there's something about that that made you say, "Yeah, let's do this in an interesting way." Well, as as Han I mentioned, you know, there was some well, pub well publicized issues uh, that happened to the King Street Laundry. You know, it became an unsafe place, uh, kind of a perfect storm of COVID-related challenges, open drug use. There were people sleeping in there, and and folks really stopped going there. And so we collectively said, if we're going to try to do this and make this sustainable and prevent the errors of the, ch of the past from returning, how do we do that? Yeah. So that was kind of the existential question we really tried to address. Um, and then we kind of worked backwards and we just said, we really need to try to form, you know, deep and meaningful connections with the community in any way possible. So that, that was kind of the, the origin of it. And from there, it's just kind of kind of blossomed into different areas. So when did this, when did the transaction take place? When did you actually open the doors as so so we was, King Street Laundry? It, 20... so yeah, it was June, we opened on June 15th of 22. So we're coming up on two years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. you're gonna so have your birthday soon. Yes, yes. Yeah. Second birthday. Second, Second birthday, we're so excited. Fantastic. So yeah, two years, it's been a lot. Yeah, and so it's been a lot of like community outreach to first and foremost, like the immediate neighborhood of uh -huh. King Street, Pine Street, um, Maple Street, that sort of corridor. And then also reaching the unhoused population, um, making that sort of a nice community connection. We do free laundry events um, every Wednesday afternoon from one to three. We have free laundry for unhoused folks that can come in, get a free wash and dry. Um, and that's been a really nice option. 
In addition, we have also tried to use that as an anchor event, and we've brought in additional services. Um, we've done, like, in the winter months, we do kind of a, a winter coat or jacket giveaway during that um, free laundry event. We've also done COVID and flu shot clinics during that, you know, window of time. And we've also partnered with um, CRC, uh, and they've brought their food truck. Their good food truck has been parked out front during that free laundry time. So, like I said, it's kind of the anchor event, and then we try to layer additional services on top of it. And it's been, a, I think, a meaningful way to connect with some of the area's more vulnerable folks and yeah. provide them with a safe place to clean clothes and also hopefully get some of the other services that, that yeah. might be needed. So is this, is this a project that is making money? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a social yeah. enterprise that's actually yeah. like funding itself and funding. Well, so it's a separate thing. We have the laundromat, yeah, and then that brought about. Well, we want to do all of these amazing things with the community. Yeah. So what we really need is a nonprofit that can help that part as well, right? It's great to have. And so the free laundry event started out being kind of co-hosted with CVOEO. Um, and their Cora team, and so they would bring people in, and that they sort of funded it through a grant they had. Mm -hmm. But then it sort of changed, and we needed something more so we could sustain it. That money ran out, and we needed a way to do it. So that's what brought about Vermont Community Wash and Learn, um, and that uh, kind of came to full sort of status in January. Um, we've had some board meetings since, and um, yeah, any way that people want to donate mm -hmm. to that. <laughs> so Vermont Community Wash, so King Street Laundry is your sort of social, is the business side. Is the business. And then the Vermont Community Wash and Learn is the nonprofit yep. that has sprung up to um, do the work of this um, yeah. the social enterprise. So as Hannah mentioned, so the, the Vermont Community Wash and Learn came into being uh, in early January of this year. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is all the, some of the social initiatives and su community support uh, programming that we did previously under the umbrella of King Street Laundry will simply pass over to the nonprofit. Um, and so the idea, uh, in addition to, you know, potentially broadening our funding sources mm -hmm. uh, through the nonprofit, we've also tried to assemble a team of local stakeholders that are invested in in, in using and leveraging the, the laundromat for community benefit. And so we have, uh, I think, what, we have 11 uh, board, members. board members, all from wow. different backgrounds that, that each bring something, a new voice and perspective to figure out ways to, mm -hmm. you know, either pursue um, art or education initiatives. That's one of our areas that uh, of, of exempt activities for the, the nonprofit. Um, we're also, we've also built a, um, a workforce development program under the umbrella of the nonprofit, which will run a, a wash, dry, and fold service. Um, we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, and then lastly, um, poverty the poverty relief element, which is, you know, something that continuation from the King, King Street Laundry programming that's now been passed over. So those are kind of our four, three, uh, our core domains of the, the nonprofit called Vermont Community Wash and Learn, Inc. Oh, and is this modeled out of the, your own creative imaginations? Or no, did you well, I wish. Wouldn't that have been it? We actually, it's funny. Um, one of our very early uh, sort of, I don't know, champions behind the, <laughs> behind the scenes um, was uh, this woman who is out based out in Arizona. Um, her name is Christy, and she runs kind of a similar kind of a laundromat that also helps uh, vulnerable communities, um, the vulnerable community, um, through a wash dry fold, and they also have a social enterprise. So, right after one of our first articles came out that we were reopening the laundromat, she saw it somehow. Maybe she has a connection to Vermont, and sent us an email. And she's like, "I love what you're doing. I do something similar. Let's talk." And since that happened, we've connected with her many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, she's been a really great advocate. One of our board, or actually our board president, was just out in. Arizona for a totally separate reason and went and spent the day with her at her laundromat facilities and like learned the ropes of what they do and how they run it. Um, so we've kind of, I think, taken some of their ideas and, and yeah. kind of growing it in our own way, but modeling. I mean, I think there's not as many social resources, uh, no, um, resources for those who are vulnerable populations in in Arizona as there seem to be here in Vermont. Mm. So I think she's had to really build a lot of that infrastructure for herself. Whereas here in Vermont, there are so many organizations that take care of 
that population that we've just kind of we're helping to piggyback on them, whereas she's kind of having to build it yeah. from scratch. And you mentioned partnering with CVOEO, the Trusted mm -hmm. Community Voices out of CETO office. What's that been like? What's the support from the city been like uh, in moving this along? Yeah, I mean, city uh, and CETO in particular have been extraordinarily helpful early on, when even before we opened. Um, they helped provide some access to some initial funds, which helped with the acquisition and, and the closing. Um, and then uh, we also were approved for um, a, a grant to install a new heat pump. Um, so we, you know, we got 20% off, and so that was uh, we needed to get some some words of support from CEDO, yeah. um, and that came through. So they they've been uh, very strong champions of everything we've done. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, Brian Pine yep. for all his ongoing support. So. Yeah. Now, a laundromat, that's like an ongoing needed community institution. Is there some sort of statistic about like how many laundromats you need and what the demographics of a community need to be? And I, I mean, I don't know if there's a hard and fast term, you know, like 100,000 people per 10 laundromats or, or some variation of that. I don't know what that is, but I do know that the South End, you know, the Maple, Pine, King Street corridors are largely rental dominated housing yep. um, that, that, don't probably, that probably don't have a lot of their own uh, existing hookup facil facilities. Um, and so it's difficult, you know, folks in these areas are definitely reliant on you know, laundromats as additional sources of, of clean clothes access. You know, our old housing stock kind of helps amplify that problem. Yeah. So um, I remember thinking that at the beginning of COVID and I was sitting inside my house, you know, remember we were like, you got to stay in your house. You can't go outside if you pass somebody on the street or you're going to get sick in those mm -hmm. early days. And I'm watching somebody walk by carrying a load of laundry and thinking, oh, I'm really lucky mm. to have a machine in my house. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting you use the term to lucky. Not, when yeah. we got into this thing and kind of really began to learn and appreciate the importance of this facility for the community, it, it kind of began to look like, you know, understanding and perceiving access to clean clothes through the lens of social equity. Yeah. Like not everybody feel, has that luck to yeah. be able to go down their hall and, and just a throw a lot on it. A lot of folks don't have that access. And so once again, third party, third neutral places like laundromats, I think play a critical role. Makes you stop and, complaining about it, doesn't it? A little bit? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. When you so, the laundry and you're like, well. Don't. So understanding that context, the, the kind of the social context in which laundromats exist and hopefully thrive, it helped frame our interpretation of the way in which this space could help. Yeah. You know, obviously, a first and foremost, a place to, to clean clothes. I mean, that's that's kind of the, the basics. But in addition, it's a people are there. Potentially, they're they're there for an hour plus while their stuff is done. Let's try to harness that that mm -hmm. idle time and, and transform it into something positive or by providing workshops. You know, we've done job fairs with with working fields and a number of other other employers. They'll kind of post up on certain crowded days and interact with patrons while their sp machines are spinning. Now, um, you could have chosen to sell cappuccinos and lattes and high <laughs> end pastries. We could have. And or someone not? else, someone Did said you should do a, a bar and I yeah. was like, or a dispensary. Yeah. I was like, I think, that's, that's not but really I'm what. So, like, really, what is it that's I, driving the two of you to do this project? Instead? I think I was raised, and I know Andrew was as well, with parents who came with, we want to help people. Everybody, all four of our parents work in, or worked in, sorry, they're all retired now, but worked in um, jobs where they were, uh, helpers of the community. Uh -huh. Andrew's parents were a nurse and they worked in, he worked in Department of Corrections. My parents were both teachers. So not people that were out to make a million bucks, so to speak, and you know, take, you know, take, they wanted to give. It was always a give. So I think we both came at that and we try to teach our own kids that too, but yeah. just, we wanna give back, give, give to the community, help the community where we both have been born and raised. Do you see when you're looking around the Burlington landscape, you're driving around? I mean, you're, you live in Burlington currently? No, no you don't. We live outside. You live, we live outside. in Williston. But so when you're driving around the community, are you like looking like, oh, I see other opportunities for something like this, other kind of social enterprise projects? No. I mean, this one has taken a lot of time <laughs> and energy, so I feel yeah. like we got to we got to we're definitely still in the crawling stage, <laughs> especially with that the the workforce development program. You know, that's in its earliest phases, so that's taking a lot of time and energy. Um, 
so no, to answer your uh, question, I'm, we're, I think I'm speaking for myself. I'm no, inwardly I, I'm, focusing on trying to make KSL and, and, and Vermont Community Wash and Learn a success. Yeah. I think that it's a small space, but there's still so much growth that we can do within right this yeah. small space um, that we haven't even, I mean, the Wash Dry Fold Social Enterprise is really our big thing right now. We're trying to really get that off the ground and really make that a bigger impact. Um, we just took on some um, work with Decker Towers because they've been in the news a lot and we really wanted to help them, people who don't have access to machines. So yep. Andrew kind of championed that, um, working with that um, their, their board to kind of get some laundry services Neat. for them. Um, and then this financial literacy, we're still really kind of at the beginning stages of it, getting it off the ground too. So I think there's a lot of excitement exciting stuff coming, but it's still, we're not there yet, and so we need to focus on getting that up and running before we could even think about something yeah. else. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Talk, let's go, just go back to where it started with the financial literacy. Tell us about what that program was, who attended, Yeah. what does that look like? So that first, um, that first event was what we considered to be kind of a, a dry run, kind of a proof of concept. Um, so we had, uh, I think, about five of the TCVs from various communities in the space. Our presenter um, from Opportunities Credit Union kind of did a quick consolidated presentation in the space. We have a pull down screen with a, you know, with a projector mm -hmm. um, and just solicited feedback from the various folks that were in the space. And then there was also, of course, some online uh, members of the TCV community. And so the idea here was just, you know, what, what elements should we emphasize uh, in, in the real life workshop? So the idea here is this was a test run, a proof of concept, does it work? You know, and there were a lot of nodding heads. Yeah, we can do this. Um, and and then, that must have been done in multiple languages. So you had the presenter yeah. was in English or So not? the present, everything was in English. Okay. However, the idea, the plan, the broad strategy is that um, once, now that we've kind of validated the concept and gotten some basic feedback, um, we'll move forward scheduling um, actual workshops. The idea is a four-part workshop. The scheduling is still very much up in the air, but each ethnic community would, would go in, a, in its in isolation, you know. So, it, so there then there would be, be potential like one translators. In, one in my my. Yeah, exactly. So there will be on translators, and so it would be every other week a four part series. And of course, while you're there, you get a free load of laundry, and it would be, you know, each section uh, would be uh, a different element of personal finance. You so know, something you learned in that that you were like. So oh, it, it sounds like you know one of the consistent sources of feedback from that initial uh, review was the importance about learning about credit monitoring. Yeah. What goes into a credit score? Yeah. Well, that, that, when I was observing the feedback, it seemed that was one of the areas of consistent concern that members of the TCVs conveyed. Mm. Like, our, our folks don't, so don't, don't, don't understand what a credit score is. Who does? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's incredibly opaque and yeah. murky. So uh, to me, I, I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I think that was one of the consistent sources of, uh, of feedback. And then also, hey, let's talk about college funding, you know, and some of the opportunities there. Yeah. So the idea here is once again, a four part series, maybe 45 minutes to an hour, and they'll be um, divided into different um, TCV communities and hopefully launching maybe uh, the first one going in late June or July and, and then scattered throughout the rest of the year. And then the other part of that also is that there would have both an in-person option, but also an online option. Yeah, that hence, hence the owl. Right? Hopefully the owl. Yeah, the owl might have to make another appearance That's or two. Cool. Or we love the owl. And or we'll record, you know, or you can send us the recordings and we can make this available yeah, to, yeah, to absolutely. the community yeah. um, as well. Um, well, uh, there's, a, you know, just one last thing. You know, we're going to have a group come in next week from Saudi Arabia saying, you know, the Vermont Council on World Affairs comes and often visits with us here and they have a group coming um, to talk about social enterprise. Oh, wow. And I just wonder if you have any thoughts or a message to share with folks. You know, this is a group from Saudi Arabia that's coming, but other folks about just like, you know, they're interested in delving social into this. What are your, what are the cautionary tales I mean, and what are the, yeah. My, my initial impression is that social good and positive social change are not incompatible with profit mm -hmm. and, and, sustain, and, and financial sus sustainability. So I think oftentimes people think it's one or the other. I, I, don't, I think that's, that's a fallacy. I think you can do both things simultaneously. I think the laundromat continues to help people, but at the same time, you know, we, we cover our costs and maybe a little something extra as well. So mm -hmm. um, I feel like in many respects, it, 
I would even go one step further. It actually supports, you know, some of the social and community uh, programming that we're doing, I feel like helps actually support and improve the bottom line. Yeah. Because people say, oh, we, we heard about some of the things you're doing. We want to support that, sure. which is extraordinary. And I think also on top, just to say uh, additionally to that, is that we are always in the, the, the place of saying, yes, do you have an idea? Like, we want to bring in more and more ideas to the social enterprise. So is there other things that people want to see um, available? And so we're always open to new ideas of, of mm -hmm. things we can do in the space that, like the tile that bring painting. community. The yeah. tile painting, what is right. That? Tell me quick before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Teresa Davis of Davis Studios, um, yeah. she applied for a grant and got a grant through BCA, um, Burlington City Arts, and they did a four-part series of ceiling tile paintings, which oh, you can see up there. Um, okay. If you go down on the, the page to the bottom, um, just really beautiful. People could come in for a couple hours, do free laundry, and also paint some ceiling tiles. And that was still um, one of the earlier, I think the second one, yeah. but we've done two more since, and there's just the whole ceiling is full of beautiful artwork of people that just came in off the, the street to do laundry or just because they wanted to come do some art with friends on a Saturday. and. Great. Yeah, and, it's pretty fabulous. And it's important to emphasize um, that all these events always include laundry. And they're right? always free. And the, Yeah, so that's that's an, kind of a universal so theme. Come to the event, you can throw in a load yeah, of laundry. Yeah, because you're, you're here, there. it's a laundromat. What do we do really well? You know, we're pretty good at, at high volume good. washing uh, and drying. <laughs> so, uh, so that's kind of a universal thing. And so we're just trying to build connection and community around that core idea. Um, well, thank you both for coming. Is there any last things that you want to share about this project? Folks want information. The website is there, 72kingstreetlaundry.com. Yeah. Um, I would just say that uh, if there's any businesses or individuals that would like to support the emerging wash, dry, fold service, we actually have an ordering link on our website, or they can reach out via email. And that's, um, they can, they can send in their stuff, it'll get washed, dried, folded. Yep, and returned. And that is yeah. another social enterprise where you're hiring folks around financial sustainability. So, so that is kind of a separate element. That's uh, part of the workforce development, um, and I, I understand it gets it's confusing. But um, so that will be uh, a workforce development project where we'll have what we call job readiness coaches, which will work with individuals that may have challenges or barriers to durable employment on their own. And they'll use the laundromat as kind of a, a supported learning and work environment. So, the, so there'll be a benefit to the participants. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, it'll help uh, you know, the, the individual requesting the laundry service as well. So I guess to your initial question, if there's anyone that has a need for those services, please reach out via the website or email. Oh. And we'd love to help and, and help that program grow as well. Great. Thanks. And, Thank um, you. Anna, any last Thoughts for no, you? I think just uh, check out our website. We're always posting the new events that are coming up. And check out our Facebook and Instagram pages as well. For And like us on Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and we hope to have a, a, a Vermont Community Wash and Learn website up shortly. Yeah. It should it's, come There in. was something there. It was uh, it's on our, it, there's a link to donate yeah. if people are interested in donating. There's also uh, a separate website that will be, yeah. um, it's coming. It's Got just. It. On its it's taken a little while with GoDaddy to make it Perfect. populate. Right. <laughs> well, at, on that um, note, um, thanks for watching Town Meeting TV. Stay tuned for other great community programming. And thank you both for being here and sharing your story with us. Thank thanks. you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, okay, thank great. you. Thank you.